This is my review of the 2021 Triumph Rocket 3 GT. Triumph Rocket 3 GT, 2500cc three-cylinder engine, 163 foot-pounds of torque, making 165 horsepower. It equates to a 0 to 60 time of 2.73 seconds, if you're so inclined. When you buy a Rocket 3 in either the Roadster or the more laid-back GT version, like I've got here, you're buying a massive engine that Triumph built an incredible motorcycle around. I have to say that the fit and finish of this motorcycle is the best of any motorcycle I've ever owned. It is truly a work of art in my opinion from the mix of that black paint and the brushed aluminum details. It's solidly built and it's clearly designed to lead the power cruiser market. I really have enjoyed my ownership of this motorcycle. Hey, while I'm thinking about it, it's starting to get a little cooler here in North Texas and there is nothing better for me than going for a brisk ride and returning to the shop and putting on one of these MC Rider hoodies, you need to get one for yourself. Why not buy yourself that early Christmas present? Go to mcrider.com slash hoodie. Get yourself one of these MC Rider hoodies for Christmas. You deserve it. I'll even give you a promo code. You can use a promo code MC Hoodie, and you'll get 10% off your purchase. So Triumph makes the GT and the R version of the Rocket 3. The primary difference between the R and the GT are the GT has more forward foot controls and a more touring oriented handlebar that reaches further back to the rider. The R offers a little forward leaning in the handlebars and mid controls. The GT also offers a slightly lower seat height with a little more room in the seat and a passenger backrest. You get a small windshield in the front and heated grips. Now the GT is incredibly comfortable for me. My bad knees really enjoy those forward controls and the handlebars keep me from leaning forward to have to reach out for them. It does mean that you sit more upright though, so you're not as streamlined when riding at highway speeds. But with all that power that the bike offers, that's probably a good thing as the wind serves as a reminder that it's time to back off the throttle a little. I find the wind protection very comfortable. It speeds up to 75 miles per hour on the highway. After that, it starts to get a little windy. That small windshield in the front keeps most of the wind off of your chest and allows the full face helmet to cut through the wind with little turbulence. The Rocket 3 has an impressive list of standard features. It's got LED lights, a torque assisted clutch, which makes that clutch comfortable to control. The foot controls can be adjusted forward or back on the GT version or up or down in one of three positions on the R and my bike came with the forward controls in the middle of the three placements and I've had no reason to move them. It has four riding modes, road, rain, sport, and a rider configurable option so that you can adjust the engine and the braking characteristics to suit you. I keep mine in that rider configurable position 90% of the time. It has an all digital TFT instrument cluster, has ABS, cornering ABS, and traction control, cruise control, and keyless ignition. Though some riders have experienced problems with the keyless ignition, mine at times will say that the key is out of range when it's in my pocket and I'm riding down the road, but other than that, I've not had any major issues. But let's face it, what you're buying this bike for is you're buying an engine. To me, the engine characteristics are the most important part of any motorcycle. I like smooth running engines for road bikes. My favorite bikes I have ever owned have always shared this characteristic, and the Rocket 3 has smooth running power perfected. So what's it like to ride? 
Well, I have to tell you this story to help you understand why I like this bike and just one of the reasons why I love my wife so much. I was out for a solo ride early on in my ownership. I would turned onto my favorite road, one of my back roads in the area, and was immediately disappointed that a school bus was directly in front of me. I'm not sure if that bus driver was a rider himself or if he could see the look of disappointment on my face through the tinted visor of my full face showy helmet, but he had mercy on me. He pulled over towards the side of the road, he put his hand out, and he waved me around. It was on the two-lane road and there wasn't much traffic ahead, but I didn't want to hang out too long on the side of the bus, so I shifted the Rocket 3 down the gear, gave it what I would consider a moderate, if not slightly more than moderate amount of throttle. That's when I realized I was on a bike unlike anything I'd ever owned. The Rocket 3 in a controlled manner with no drama shot around that bus like it was a bullet fired out at the shooting range. What was one second a large yellow school bus between me and the curvy road ahead was instantly a small yellow dot that was disappearing in my mirrors. I came home after that ride and I was telling that story to my wife. Now, I hear from a lot of riders that their spouse gets on them about riding motorcycles, and I'm very fortunate that my wife understands me because her response to that story was fantastic. She didn't lecture me about being careful or shake her head in shame. She just said, well, they do call it a rocket. And that just made me smile, made my day. I'm a lucky man to have her in my life. Okay, enough of that sappy stuff. Back to the motorcycle while the Rocket 3 has more power than you can legally be used on any road in the U.S., it's not unruly by any means, and it's where the, this bike puts the power down that makes it such a fun motorcycle to ride, even if you want to ride it within the legal limits. Now, I've ridden other powerful motorcycles that always felt like a caged beast on some road. Some of the Ducatis I've ridden come to mind instantly when I think about those unruly motorcycles. Now, just a small blip of the throttle made these bikes want to ride out from under you and made the bike feel like it was very hooligan in nature. The Rocket 3 with its massive three-cylinder engine is built for torque. Now, getting up to the speed limit is effortless and a blast, especially when you're getting onto the freeway. It's got instant power, instant acceleration, and it gets you safely in the flow of traffic, also in an instant. Now, all that power can be abused if the rider wants to, but you don't have to abuse it to have fun on the Rocket 3. Torque numbers are what's important to me for a street bike, and that's exactly where the Rocket 3 shines. If you want to just cruise and take a leisurely ride, the Rocket's happy to do that with you. If you want to drop a gear and get around a school bus, this bike will flex its muscle and it will oblige. Now, I've never ridden a motorcycle with as much power and potential that this is, and it's civilized for everyday riding. When it comes to power, it really is the best of all worlds. Have you figured out by now that I really like the Triumph Rocket 3? If not, let me just say it, I really like the Triumph Rocket 3. In fact, all things considered, it might be the best built, most fun motorcycle I've ever owned. No motorcycle does everything, and the Rocket 3 is no exception. If I was gonna ride across country, or take my wife with me on a longer ride, or I needed luggage space for a trip or a run to the store, I'd still pick my Goldwing for those duties. The Goldwing is still the best touring bike that I've ever owned, but the Rocket 3 might just be the best motorcycle. A very close second to that would be the 1999 Honda Valkyrie that I used to own. I guess I'm just a sucker for big power cruisers. Now, no motorcycle is perfect, and the Rocket 3 does have a few flaws in my opinion. The first is a TFT screen. It has a ton of information on it. The problem is it, it's too small to read. Now, I understand this is coming from a guy who wears glasses to read, and I'm half blind in my left eye, but this screen really does need some work. Now, I've never owned a motorcycle that I couldn't easily make out all of the information on the screen that I needed to while I was riding down the road. The important stuff is clear, like the speed, RPM, and the fuel levels, but all the other information that the screens can display requires some effort to read, or it's impossible to read while you're in motion. Because I don't like to stare down at that screen to try to figure it out. I want to just glance down at it so I easily read the information and keep going on my way. 
because your guess would be as good as mine as to what the tire pressure is when I'm out on the road. Thankfully, that it has a nag light that comes on if the pressure gets too low. Otherwise, I would just be riding in ignorant bliss if the tire pressure got too low on the road. The engine does dump a significant amount of heat off the headers, and this is even more noticeable on a hot Texas day. But it's a huge engine and all that power that creates heat, and that heat has to go somewhere, and it primarily is dumping out on your right leg. There's precious little protection for this motorcycle in a drop. It's not an inexpensive motorcycle by any means, coming in at slightly under $24,000 MSRP. And if you drop it, you're gonna break stuff. To make it worse, I've not found anything on the aftermarket to add protection. So don't look for this motorcycle to be used in any skills competitions. This motorcycle is one of the best at what it was built for, but skills competitions and tight maneuvers are not its forte. With all of that power and the size that the engine requires, a pretty large frame to handle all of that, and a longer frame adds to the stability on the road, helps send it a lot of power to the rear wheel, but it comes at the cost of slow speed maneuverability. That's not to say that the bike is not maneuverable enough for everyday riding. U-turns on a standard two-lane road are not a problem. It would just fall well down the list of calling this a highly maneuverable motorcycle for any slow speed skills competitions. When it comes to living with this motorcycle, that engine is amazing. The brakes offer great feel and they work well, especially considering the weight of the bike. Motorcycle feels planted in corners and it offers good feedback. And the transmission is one of the highlights of the bike and it's one of the smoothest shifting bikes that I've ever owned. I opted to put a quick shifter on my rocket and click it down through the gears. Clutch free when approaching a corner is fantastic. Motorcycle stays composed and the audible sound of that massive engine when you're clicking down through the gears is just music to your ears. I also added the factory panniers and I love the way that Triumph designed the racks for the panniers. The bags can be easily removed. They lock onto the bike so you remove them with the same key. But once they're removed, the racks fold up and they're out of the way and it looks really good with or without the bags. The most notable competition in this category to me would be the Ducati Diavel. Now I had the privilege of leading a Ducati sponsored demo day a few years ago. In fact, it was a whole weekend. So I spent two solid days riding the Diavel and taking riders out for demo rides. While it was a good motorcycle, to me it falls short in comparison to the Rocket 3. The Rocket 3 is more comfortable, it's better suited for street duty, the engine characteristics, and it looks better to me in my opinion. I've also owned a Harley Davidson Fat Bob, which kind of checks some of the same boxes as the Rocket 3. But I sold the Fat Bob to be able to purchase the Rocket, and I've not regretted it for a minute. Now, some of my absolute favorite things about this motorcycle, I love the overall look of the bike. The engine is just amazing with exceptional power, and it's composed for street riding. It has all the safety features that I like, ABS, cornering ABS, traction control. For me, at 5'11", the GT is extremely comfortable and easy on the knees. And to boot, it's got shaft drive, so low maintenance, and a 10,000 mile or one year service interval. When you drop a gear and roll on the throttle, you truly are on a rocket. So to sum this thing up, if you're in the Power Cruiser segment and you've thought about buying a bike in this segment, I can highly recommend the Triumph Rocket 3. It really is a fantastic motorcycle. Till next week, guys, it's Kim with MC Rider, and I'll see you on my Rocket 3 GT out on the road.